We turn now to a literary rage among many tween girls. The Click book series has sold millions of copies, but this is a far cry from Nancy Drew. The world is more Gossip Girl or The Hills, where fashion-obsessed mean girls clash and alpha females come out on top. The series has attracted its share of critics, but the author and her fans, and even some parents of fans, stand by the stories, as my co-anchor Terry Moran reports from Los Angeles. Welcome to The Click. If you're a girl of a certain age in America, a young teen or tween, you may already belong, like these girls, eager, focused, dressed up, and thrilled. And just like her, too. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Oh, my God, this is very cool. That's Lisey Harrison, the leader of this click, the creator of it, the best-selling author of the series of books that have taken this young set by storm, The Click Books. I love these books. These are the best you. books since Harry Potter. Say it again, sister. These are the best books since Harry Potter. The click books, though, are very different from Harry Potter. And they're all about a group, a clique of middle school girls, spoiled mostly, rich mostly, and obsessed with fashion, brand names, makeup, being thin, and trashing one another. Status means everything in the books, and the mean girls rule. Whatever. Anne of Green Gables, the same. Hi. I love your books. Thank you so much. You're an amazing writer. Thank you. I really, I appreciate that. Like I said, you know, you always think of that. The girls, Lisey's girls, they just eat her books up. They're really <laughs> addicting. Like, they're so interesting. There's always something new. Like, what's going to happen to her? What's going to happen to him? I like the books because I can pretend to be the people and not just like of how they act and how bratty they are sometimes, but of um, how they stay friends no matter what. It's really riveting and you really like to read them because you just get captured in them and all the things they say and the things they do, I mean, they're wrong, but it's just fun to read about them. Now, the click books have plenty of critics, feminists who say they send the wrong messages about appearance and body image, conservatives who find the characters' scheming behavior appalling, liberals who can't stand the avalanche of brand name dropping on every page. But the books sell. Six million copies so far. A Hollywood movie in the works. Blair, did I invite you to my BBQ? No. Then why are you all up in my grill? <laughs> so this is, this is where the magic happens. This is exactly where it happens. And I, I do get my hair and makeup done every day before I come to work. We visited Lisey Harrison in her office near her home in Laguna Beach, California, to talk to her about this phenomenon and what it means for kids. It's fantasy. It's aspirational. I, being the person that never got to wear designer clothes growing up, as most girls in the country can't, it's, oh my God, what would it feel like to do that? Dare to dream. It's like, you know, saying, oh, Harry Potter's not real, but God, wouldn't we all love to be able to do magic? And it's that same thing. Why is designer clothing magic? I mean, do you ever worry that you're encouraging a materialism, a consumerism, if the dream is not go out and change the world, it's if I could only have Prada. I know that my intention of putting that stuff in the books is completely satirical. I am pointing out something in our culture that I think is actually very unhealthy. I truly think that the obsession with this stuff is so over the top and so crazy that to me it's funny and I do think the readers get it. Whatever her intention, Lisey Harrison's books touch a raw nerve for middle school girls. Like, oh my god, adorable. Loser beyond repair. They're under so much pressure, these children. Clothes, weight, boys, money, school. It's out there. I don't like it, but it's a fact. And I think a lot of the girls growing up now, it'd be great if one of them could go, yeah, that is really terrible about our society. And I don't want to go down that road. This is the age when they're all so impressionable, but they're also so aware. I think by 12, it's already too late. So I'm not going to write a gosh golly book just to pretend that this stuff doesn't exist. It exists, those toxic like pressures to conform, to run with the crowd, not just in kids' lives, but in Lisey Harrison's, too. She says she gets her material from the adult world, her world. To me, those feelings, those emotions, they're no different between an adult and a teenager. And I've just taken that longing to fit in, that need to be accepted and loved, that need to be seen as smart and attractive and, and viable and important, and just dress them up in smaller, more expensive clothes. But 
Is that right? Can it be a good thing to drill so much of the adult world's obsession so deeply into children's literature? Lisi says her books, by showing how the apparently glamorous lives of her mean girl characters can be hollow, actually help her readers. I get thousands and thousands of letters, thousands and thousands of emails from these girls, and I do read them. And every letter says, I suddenly realize that it's not so important to be popular anymore. I used to be like this with my friends, but now we've all changed. Truly, they all get it. At her reading, Lisey demonstrated her point with a leading question for sure, but still. Do you guys get that these books, that I'm not saying that wearing labels on clothes and I'm not saying this is a way we should live our lives right do you guys understand the point of this yes um, that everyone is like insecure even the like alphas anyone like they just show that they're mean to like cover it all up thank you I would lip kiss you right now if I wasn't so far away <laughs> okay and what do you think about girls that obsess over clothing labels do you think that's a good thing do you guys want to be like that no, no. Say it again, sister. Say it again. <laughs> Thank you. So this is from a mom. Yeah. It's great to be able to talk about these books with her after we read them. I really like that the book shows Massey's insecure side. I think it gives us a little insight into the cool kids. They have their problems, too. So this is a parent who says the books are a teaching tool. Teaching tool for, for her. Parents. Yep. Rama. Yes. Did you have any concerns when Hannah started reading these books? Were I didn't. You, like, you didn't? I didn't. No. I really didn't. No. Only because Hannah had gone through some stuff with some mean girls. And so I thought it was a really good thing for her to, you know, see some other characters and how they dealt with the circumstances that she might have experienced. And as a mother and daughter pulled us together because we had to look for answers together. And so one of the answers was that um, she started looking for it in these books and it was kind of a neat thing. So these books brought you closer together, would you say? Yeah, probably. Because, like, I can talk to her about everything and, like, I actually talk to her about the books and stuff. It's cool. So they get it, her girls, this new kind of writing for children, where the old certainties are left far behind. So then, in general, take a step back for a worried parent or for, for, curious, me, for a curious reader. <laughs> what would you say is the moral? of the story that you write about these girls? The moral of the story, that's a good, uh, okay, let me think about that. The moral of the story is accept yourself for who you are. Accept yourself. For so many girls, that is the hardest thing for them to do in America today.